Hello, everyone. Today we will talk about one of the most important uh, uh, AFO science paper called Fourier neural operator. This this paper is actually the most important uh, operator learning paper, and uh, it published on twenty twenty, but has already more than one thousand uh, uh, citations on January twenty twenty four. So the most important thing, let's go to the details of the fundamental motivation of this paper. So we try to solve partial differential equations and learn a family solution of this partial differential equations. If we use a standard method, standard deep learning method, basically they can only do a finite dimension operator. So what is that? If we use a convolutional neural network, the resolution is just, will be fixed. Generally, it can be like 20, 224 by 224. So if you train on this resolution data, you can only train, generally you can only train, or you can only test on this kind of resolution. So your resolution is fixed. And you cannot carry your solution at a new point. For example, you try to do some interpolation, you can do not do that. It is not straightforward to do a super resolution and increase the resolution to a higher, like maybe 1000 to 1000. It is not straightforward to do that. You need to do some post processing. Mm -hmm. And for the pins, like this, this paper, physics informed in your network, they can only learn one solution. So every time they need to solve it again, because their fundamental method is the input is the coordinates, and they use a neural network to learn the solution. So they, they are not in mass independent. They are mass independent. And but they need to formulate the problem as an optimization problem. And it's kind of a solver. So they have a PD loss, data loss, boundary condition loss, and initial condition loss. And they can do that. So they requires you to understand and know the PD underlying PD. So how to have a model that can address both the limitation of pins and also limitation of a standard neural network. So this paper proposed the Fourier neural operator. This they are mesh independent and mesh free, and they can do infinite dimensional operators. The reason why they are mesh dependent, they can be mesh independent because they use, they do some special trick uh, for like a one, one by one convolution and some lifting and uh, decrease the channel number and also they use a free, free transform. Because this is a neural network and they can train once but they can use for many cases. And they do not require the understanding of the underlying PDE. They because they only rely rely on data. So let's talk about the. Let's take a one D example, like one D Burgers equation example. So suppose, because this is one D example, and uh, we only care about one solution U. So this is solution. This is the initial condition. Suppose we the resolution spatial resolution is one hundred. And first, it will concatenate with a grid. Grid is a coordinates. Basically, it's a coordinates. So the right now, our tensor, the shape of our tensor becomes to 2 by 100, because we have 100 space resolution. And we use a MLP to lift the number of channel into maybe, suppose here is 10. But in paper, it actually uses 64. This is very important because basically the number of channel is a number of features. So if you have an MLP, basically you do the data fusion in, in channel one and channel two, and uh, you can have this one. And uh, if you have new ways, you can have a second channel. You can, if you have another ways, you can have third channel. So you can do some data fusion different kinds of ways for data fusion for the channel 1 and channel 2 to have this kind of channel. 
after that, you you will they will do some Fourier neural operator like a Fourier neural block, and they typically have four blocks, and the input of all these blocks and output of all these blocks are the same. The shape is exactly the ten by one hundred, like uh, this is a channel number and this is hidden channel number and this is a spatial resolution. And uh, in the end, they want to have the solution at a t one t equal to one seconds, so it can be a certain time step. And the number of channel is one because this is like you only have one solution, like one state variable u. So the solution, the resolution will be the same, one hundred. So this is the solution. You just need to decrease the number of channels. Similarly, you can use MLP, but right now you change the number of channel from ten to one eventually. So why it can say it is can do infinite dimension and uh, they can train on low resolution but test on high resolution. So re the reason is, think about it, if we have a if we have a high resolution input, maybe like two hundred. So here it becomes two hundred, and if here it also becomes two hundred because this this MLP is independent of this spatial resolution. It only deals with the data fusion, like in each each space, like each coordinates, and they can do the data fusion in for different channels. So here, the output will become 10 by 200. And all these blocks will maintain the same resolution. And uh, so eventually, here will become 1 by, 10, 1 by 200. So why these blocks can maintain can deal with different resolution. If you use a MLP or use a convolution neural network, you cannot do that. So how can they do that? So let's consider this. So the Vx in this paper is actually the this tensor, 10 by 100. And the first thing we do Fourier transform. So if we do Fourier transform, basically we change the spatial domain into frequency domain. So here is only the frequency domain. Frequency domain, for frequency domain, you have different kinds of like bases. And we remove the, they remove the high frequency information and do the linear transformation for the amplitude and the phase. So they can have a new transformed global information. And after that, they do the inverse Fourier transform. So they can have the same uh, same shape of the tensor. But at here, they, only, they can only do global operation. And uh, they lose the information of high frequency information. But the input and the output will have the, exactly the same, uh, same shape. It doesn't matter, like uh, your input is 100 uh, spatial resolution or 200 spatial resolution. This is, this is very easy to understand. For example, if your signal, if you have a signal, like uh, after you do the Fourier transform, for example, this is your maybe Y, you can do the Fourier transform as sine X and plus maybe two sine 3x. So if you, this coefficient is 1 and this coefficient is 2. If you change it to a basis coefficient, it doesn't matter like uh, for your resolution, the resolution you change. Because you can reconstruct it to any kind of resolution. You just need to more sample data point. And uh, to compensate on the loss of high frequency information, they actually have a one by one convolution W. So what is a one by one convolution? So suppose here. So at the beginning we concatenate the initial condition and the grid. So the channel, the data set, the tensor of the data is batch and two 
and the number of spatial resolution is this one. After we do MLP, it increases the channel number. So after that, we will do a one by one convolution. One by one convolution. This one by one convolution. Suppose our tensor is like a ten by three. And let's see. Same amount of the n axis three. So that's easy to draw. And uh, if we do one by one convolution, we basically will maintain the spatial resolution. And the spatial resolution at here is is actually the three. So after that, if you use a one by one convolution operation, and if you use ten filters, ten filters, the results will be exactly the same. Here is also the same, and here is also n x the spatial resolution. It doesn't matter like uh, how many your n x can be different. Like uh, in your training, because this is a one by one convolution. The number of parameters is actually uh, one by one by the number of uh, convolution, like a filter. So it can be applied in like a spatial resolution be 100 or 200. It can work. It can work. So it is independent of this. So you can find uh, the Fourier transform operation and the inverse Fourier transform operation is independent of resolution. And this one by one convolution is independent. And here, they do the lift from two channel to 10 channel, and they keep using the 10 channel. And here, they do decrease the, decrease the number of channels so they can have the whole solution. So this is a key. The key is that they do this kind of like, uh, operation and they have this kind of uh, lift channel and uh, decrease the channel so they can achieve the, uh, their property and because they train on different kinds of paired, paired data so they can learn a family of the solution 